During your development career, you may find yourself working on a team with various individuals who know nothing about programming or code, but have an active role in your game's development. As both a programmer and designer, I've been lucky in my ability to bring the majority of my design ideas to life by mashing the keyboard, but for a lot of fellow developers in the industry, that's not necessarily the case. It is extremely common to be working on a team with individuals who never need or want to touch the codebase, but that doesn't mean it's entirely down to the programmers on the team to create all of the gameplay logic either. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I have a lot of systems in my games that expose core mechanics and components into editors in order for a designer, usually myself, to be able to create and construct gameplay loops without needing to get into the weeds of the codebase. Not only does that mean that on projects with multiple designers and programmers, designers can focus on prototyping and iterating their ideas through tooling, but the programmers don't get bogged down in this process and can focus their time and energy elsewhere in the core architecture of the game. With that in mind, it's worth exploring how you might go about exposing various parts of your game for a designer or other team member to use. Enter Bolt. Bolt is Unity's visual scripting tool that empowers anyone to build blocks of logic and construct game mechanics without needing to write any code. However, it can also be extended to work with existing code in your project, which means that it's also great for people working in teams who want to quickly throw ideas together without being blocked by the thousands of other tasks their programmer is currently working on. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. And in today's video, which is sponsored by Unity, we're going to explore how we can extend Bolt's visual scripting functionality through custom units to optimize its usability for your project. We're going to look at how we can get started with Bolt in a pre-existing project, and how we can expose features of our game in Bolt by writing custom units. We're also going to look at how we can use Bolt and our custom units to build out a tutorial flow graph for our game. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a game here that me and my team are currently working on. It's a little basic farming game. You can run around, gather seeds and plant them. As you can see, there's a couple of pieces of UI here too. We have a little objective window in the corner and a little modal window that can be called to display some text to the player. It's already pretty functional and architected entirely in C-sharp so far. One of the things we'd really like to do is build out some tutorial logic to introduce the player to the game and give them some objectives. Now, I could do this in code, but it can get quite complicated quickly, and ideally I'd like to keep my overall gameplay logic away from my base system architecture. Besides, doing it in code actually limits the number of people who can work and iterate on the tutorial. Ideally, I can find a way to expose different systems, mechanics, and behaviors that are already in the game into the editor in order to build out tutorials and quests and give access to bespoke game code for other members of my team to play with while I focus on other more important system and gameplay architecture. So we're gonna do this using Bolt. Let's head over to the asset store and add Bolt to our project. If you're using Unity 2021 or later, you should be able to grab it from the package manager directly. When you've downloaded Bolt from the asset store, you'll then need to head to Tools, Install Bolt. When imported, you'll be presented with this lovely wizard. The first question is how to present data within Bolt. I want my less code savvy team to use this tool with relatively little friction, so I've chosen to go with the human naming conventions. You'll then go through the process of assigning assemblies and types, and unless your project is using any third-party assemblies or objects, you should just be able to leave these as they are. And Bolt is now set up. We can now delete the install Bolt folder that got created when we imported the asset from the asset store and get started creating the functionality for the designers. Let's start by creating a new game object in our scene for our tutorial flow. On here, let's add a new flow machine component. Then let's create a new macro, which we'll just call tutorial macro. Let's open the Bolt editor and take a quick look at how things work. Bolt is extremely powerful. It allows users to chain together different units composed of multiple types, methods, and behaviors in order to create logic. It also manages to search your code base and exposes different methods and properties from these scripts to use. Most users can construct game logic entirely from scratch without needing to touch any code. For instance, let's suppose at the start of my tutorial, I want to set the text on my objective window over here. In our flow graph, I can head into the finder and get the instance of my UI system. From there, I can get the objective box and then call the set objective method on this script and set my objective. This kind of workflow is great and it's awesome that Bolt exposes things in this way but for me, it's a little verbose and requires us to manually go through and reference everything just to change that objective. 
I think it would be much tidier if we could just call a generic set objective method and leave it to our code to handle. Fortunately, we can do this in Bolt by creating custom units. Custom units are a great way for us to build our own blocks in Bolt for more advanced functionality and integration and allow us to define different inputs, outputs, and controls for use in our graphs. Let's take a look at how we can create a custom unit to set the objective in our graph more easily. Let's create a new script called set objective unit. In here, we'll extend from the unit class. You may need to add both Bolt and Ludic to your namespaces at the top of the class. Let's then add a unit category attribute and create a new category in our finder for objectives. Let's add a new control input property called input and a control output property called output. This unit will take a string input and send it to our objective UI. So let's also add a value input called objective in. And in our definition method, let's tell Bolt that our input is our control input. Let's give it in as a label and assign our enter method, which we'll create in a second. Let's then assign our output as our control output with the label out. Let's also tell Bolt that our objective value input needs to be a string with the label objective. Finally, we'll call the requirement method to tell Bolt that we need to assign our value input for this node to be valid. In our enter method, we'll retrieve the objective using the flow.getValue method and pass in our objective input. Then we'll call our UI system singleton to assign this method to our objective and return our output to tell our graph to move on. Now, if we head back into Unity and choose Tools, Bolt, Build Unit Options, Bolt will recompile to include our new set objective unit. We can then add this to the graph and assign our objective string as an input. When we hit play, Bolt will process our unit and our objective will get assigned. So now we know how to build basic custom units, let's take a look at how to do something a bit more complex. Before the game starts, I'd like to show this modal window with a series of different prompts and require the user to click next or previous to move through them. Again, we could go through and manually hook all of this functionality up in Bolt, but as you can see, the code for our modal window box already supports different kind of layouts and callbacks so we can actually simplify this whole process by creating a custom unit that handles both showing our modal window and its output. Let's create a new script called show modal window unit. In here, we'll create our inputs and outputs like before. However, this time we'll make four different outputs for the four different states of our modal window. We'll also create an input for the window title and an input for the window description. Then let's also add a graph reference, which we'll be using in a moment. In our definition, we'll create our input and output ports. Now, the idea here is that we're creating a dynamic unit for Bolt that sort of handles anything we throw at it and figures out how to send that to our modal window. Essentially, this window has a show method and four different callbacks. When a button in the window is pressed, it calls for the corresponding method, which in turn triggers the callback action. When we show the window, we pass in all four of our callback methods and use these parameters to determine which buttons to show. So if we want our window to only show a continue button, we only send in the continue action and pass all of the other parameters as null. With this in mind, let's head back into our modal window unit class. In our enter method, let's get the value of our title and description. Then let's get the reference to our current graph from the flow. We're not going to output anywhere directly from this flow as we're waiting for a button press first. So we'll need this reference to continue the flow later. Next, we'll create actions for each of our outputs and assign them if they have a connection. Otherwise, we'll keep them as null so our modal window doesn't show them. Then we'll pass all of this into our modal windows method and finally return null. Then let's fill in our class callbacks so that our graph can continue when our buttons are pressed. Back in Unity, let's go ahead and rebuild the units again so we can add this to our flow graph. Let's add three modal window units, set some strings up and hook their outputs together so we can move between them. If we hit play, we now have our objective set and our modal window pops up. Each window shows the corresponding button based on its output and moves to the appropriate next point in the flowchart. Something that's also really awesome about handling our event logic this way is that we can make changes at runtime. So if we want to make a change to our second tutorial message here, we can simply update it in the graph and switch back to it in game and voila. 
Additionally, we can add more modal windows or connect different outputs while the game is running and Bolt handles them. This makes designing and setting up gameplay logic such as tutorials extremely easy. So I've gone ahead and created a few more custom units. I've hooked up some units to our game event logic with listeners waiting for our player to pick up some seeds and then continue to set different objectives and listen for different events to flesh out the tutorial logic. As you can hopefully see, while Bolt is definitely an amazing tool for non-programmers to get stuck into game development, thanks to the flexibility of custom units, it can also be used by more experienced programmers and designers such as you or me to act as a flexible game state controller and allows you to separate more bespoke top level state stuff such as tutorials, quests or campaign logic from your larger and more general system architecture. As usual, this video is definitely just scratching the surface and I'm sure you can think of many more bespoke ways you can use Bolt and these custom units to build your game faster and more efficiently. And that's about it for this video. Once again, a big thanks to Unity for sponsoring. If you'd like to get started with Bolt in your projects, I've posted a few links in the description below. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Alternatively, if you want to see more from me first, there's a suggestion on screen now. I also just want to say a huge thanks to everyone that subscribed on Patreon in the past month. Your support so far has been overwhelming and I'm really grateful that so many of you have opted in to help the channel grow. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.